we don't really want to cook over high, high flame. It's too hard to control the heat, but the heat coming off of this right now is hot. So, what we'll do is we rake it up a little bit like that. We'll get our, our grill sitting there, and then we'll tuck up another piece under the other end of it just to prop it up a bit. It would be a lot easier if I had some good hardwood, but doesn't have any growing up here. All right, let's see what we got here. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Very nice. Now, I just use the white navy beans. Um, they are surprisingly, to me anyways, it was a surprise, um, one of the most nutritious of all of the beans you can get. Now, I would have thought that the red beans, simply because the red color usually means that it's pretty healthy stuff, I would have thought those would be more nutritious, but that seems not to be the case. The most nutritious are the little white navy beans and then the larger great white northern beans. And there's actually, uh, on the internet, there is a bean, uh, I don't know what you call it, bean um, website anyways, uh, at Bean Institute, who knows. But at any rate, they, um, they have all the information on the different beans, nutritional value, how much potassium, and all the different breakdown on the different beans and what they mean to you. Uh, it's very interesting, and uh, it certainly told me a couple of things that I didn't expect. I'll put a post, I'll post, uh, I'll put a link in the, in the bottom of this, uh, in the description, so that you can uh, check that out if you're interested. So this is doing real good. Uh, it's going to take a few more minutes to cook those. They've been on here 25 minutes, 20 minutes, so I'm going to give them probably 45 minutes to an hour, and then we'll check them anyways. I don't want them mushy, but I do want them well cooked. And then we'll start the chili, and I'll, uh, I'll show you that from start to finish. So on my poker, this is usually the end if I'm just poking in the wood stove. I just poke and poke and pull with this. This end here normally would be the handle, but if you reverse it, you can take the handle portion of it and tip it down because it's different length on either side and it's got that little hook in it. So I can lip, slip that down in my pot and bring it back. Now that will stabilize the pot on a level and with the other hook, I can just pick this pot right up even though you know it wasn't ever really designed to be picked up that way unless you were wearing gloves or something. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I think we're done. We'll take the big grill off the other cooker, we'll set it right on there, like that, and we'll start heating up our Dutch oven. One of the things that I find is important on cooking anything, doesn't matter what it is, if you're going to make a chili or a stew, if you can just throw all the ingredients in a pot, add a little bit of soup base or, or chicken broth or whatever, put it over the, the burner, simmer it for a while, and you'll end up with a pretty good, pretty good stew or a pretty good chili. But it's not going to be the best it could be. And one of the reasons, uh, or not one of the reasons, but one of the things that I try to do is treat every single ingredient slightly individually as it goes in the pan. So we've made the beans, there, there's absolutely nothing in the bean pot but, but the white navy beans and water. Absolutely nothing else. Those beans are actually pretty good to eat that way with just a tiny bit of salt on them. So what I'm going to do here first, we're going to put a little bit of oil in here. I'm going to get smoked out. Now this is pork. <coughs> and all I've done is just a pork roast uh, that we had that we, you know, from one of the hogs that we butchered last year. There, that levels that up a little bit better. There. And I actually, when I pulled this out of the freezer, some of the packages we have are smoked pork and some of them are just pork. And I thought this one was smoked and it wasn't. So, all I've done to this is add a little bit of liquid smoke, a little bit of uh, the liquid hickory and a little bit of the liquid mesquite. Um, that's it. Oh, and a little bit of oil just to just to mix it all together. So we're just going to dump these little pieces of pork in there. Well, 
I'll spread them around. I'll bring you over here in a minute so you can see that. I want those to start cooking a little bit. And the first thing we're going to do is get those cooking and then we're going to probably do a little bit of seasoning right there. If you wait till you're cooking the whole meal and you've got, you know, 10 different ingredients in there and you're trying to figure out the seasoning, it's awfully difficult to season a large amount of stuff um, and try and get the balance just the way you want it. But if you season each ingredient as it goes in just a little bit, then it, it just builds the flavor as you go. So that's just cubed up pork, nothing fancy. We'll let that get, get hot to get it start to get a little bit of a sizzle. We're just going to slightly brown this. And that's what I mean by treating each ingredient a little bit separately. We're going to let this brown just slightly, uh, as if we were cooking it just to eat it, but not fully cooked through, and then we'll start adding our other ingredients. While we're waiting for that to start to get a bit of a sizzle, we have onions, garlic, and chipotle peppers. Look at those little babies. Right out of the freezer. Uh, we, we make them and freeze them. Um, you can get them in adobo sauce, you just purchase them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dice all this stuff up real fine, and the onions as well. I'm going to get it all pretty much in two separate places. I'm probably going to put the onions on a plate here. I'll put that there. And once we're ready here, I'm not going to make you watch me dice onions. Once we got this all diced up and we're ready to go, then we'll think about starting to put things into the pot. By then the meat should be starting to, uh, to brown just slightly. Okay, so we have our onions and our garlic chopped up. We have the chipotle peppers uh, ready to go right there. Let's go and see how the meat's doing. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh yeah, look at that. So that's just starting to uh, just starting to color a little bit, lose its pinkness, and just break it up a little bit so it doesn't stick together. Oh yeah. That's looking good. Starting to just get some color to it. Uh, the juices are starting to flow, which is good. We want that all to mix in the bottom, so we just got that all stirred up nice. So, next what we want to start doing is adding a few more things to it. So what we'll do now is we'll add in our garlic and our onions. And we'll give that maybe 10 minutes to, to start cooking and soften up, start to sweat themselves in there, so let some of their flavor go. As they heat up, some of the natural oils and sugars and the onions and the garlic will be released and start to release all those flavors and that great aroma that you get from onions and garlic, if you like that. I happen to really like that. So we're gonna let that go a little bit and we'll, uh, we'll come back to it probably in about 10 minutes. Okay. I think we'll add the chipotle in there now. And these were the three little pieces of pepper. You can buy these in small cans. Uh, chipotle and adobo sauce. And uh, they're a fairly spicy pepper. Now these still had the seeds in them. Probably can't see that. So this is a take no prisoners deal. So normally you might, if you're not going to use a hotter pepper like this, and you don't want to use too much because I like things with a good zip to them, but I really don't like them, you know, super hot. So this will blend in there. Now, one of the things we're going to put in here in a while will be brown sugar. And one thing that sugar does is it helps regulate and uh, control the heat of a lot of things. So if you do sort of get it a little bit too hot, you could always add a little extra sugar. You, know, you don't want to add too much because it will also make it sweet but it does help kill some of the burn of the heat. So we're just gonna let that carry on for another few minutes and then we'll get on with the rest of it. Okay, so let's see how we're doing. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh man. Oh, let's just eat it now and see, call it a day. That's awesome. Now we're starting to get, not dried out, but it's getting a little less in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add, now you can add tomato, uh, tomato paste, tomato sauce, whatever you want. Um, you can add your favorite barbecue sauce. This is homemade barbecue sauce, one of, one of two different ones that I make. It took me about two years to develop these. 
uh, as I was saying, it took me two years to develop these two saws, maybe a little bit longer than that. And they were really good during that time, but they just never quite made it to where I wanted. So I'm going to add, now this has got a little kick too. So I could normally add, like if you're adding just a straight tomato sauce or paste or something like that, you can go ahead and add quite a bit more because you're not adding any heat or anything to it. You're just adding a little bit of flavor and a little bit of moisture. But this has already got a little bit of heat from that Chipotle. So, uh, so I think I'm not, and this is already a pretty spicy sauce. So I'm not going to add too much. What we will also add is a little bit of brown sugar. Uh, molasses would work good mostly in the beans. If you find that you've made this stuff and it's just a little too much and you're not enjoying it because it's just a bit too hot, you can't take the heat out, but you can add um, more things into it a little bit to build up the volume to compensate for that heat. And this is just a bit of chili powder. Now we need this, I'm just going to take this little spoon, that's uh, probably a teaspoon. I'm not going to put very much in for now. Because again, I've got, I've got a fair bit of a heat profile going on in there right now. And I've got to be a little bit careful. So, what I am going to do is add in, uh, I have a can here of tomatoes. Um, normally I would prefer to make it with Garden Fresh. But I don't have very much Garden Fresh and I'm using them for fresh. So, I'm just going to dump that right in there. Now this old time chili, or old school chili, old, you know, from the early mid 1800s, this is kind of what they would do, you know, some canteen or some place down in Mexico or Texas or whatever, they would have access to kind of unlimited amount of the Texas Longhorn beef, um, probably at no cost, depending on how they got it, <laughs> and any of the vegetables that they could grow in their garden would be what went into it. Um, and garlic and all the natural things that you would normally expect somebody to grow in their in their home garden uh, And then they would use that To make the chili so the, the really it's a meat chili You can put all the extra things in it You normally would just not the beans and if they were going to have beans with it Which beef and beans was common they would have a chili pot sitting on the stove keeping warm They would probably have a separate pot of beans also keeping warm and then you could serve you know serve it whichever way you wanted with the beans without the beans um, we like the beans so what we're going to do is we're going to when we when we dish it up we're going to put some beans in the bottom of our dish uh, and then pour some chili over the top of it and then uh, and then it could be served with crackers um, nowadays you might want to grate a little cheese over the top you know it's it's your food it's your it's your dinner so make it whatever way you want this is just uh, Kind of an old-time recipe that I enjoy. The flavor is outstanding. Okay, now that's been sizzling. Oh yeah, look at that. That's been sizzling along there for probably another 10 or 15 minutes. Now you remember that really the only thing we're cooking in here is the meat, which has been in here probably close to an hour now. Uh, we're, you know, we're softening up and sauteing the onions and the garlic. The peppers are um, are a cooked pepper. The tomatoes are already stewed, so we're really not adding a whole lot of uh, things that need some serious cooking. So the final two little things we're going to put in here, because this is very, very nearly ready to plate up. So, in order to add just a little nicer color, we're going to, well, I haven't got much paprika left in here, so we're going to shake in a little paprika. There we go, nice smoky paprika. That would be probably a teaspoon, perhaps. Now I've built up some pretty pretty good heat profile in this, so I want to be a little bit cautious. And now here's cumin, <coughs> and again about a half a teaspoon. Cumin is a very distinctive flavor, but it doesn't really have heat to it the way a chili would. So I'm not too concerned about that, I just don't want to over, overpower the flavor. So that's it. We are complete as far as what we're putting in. So this can just simmer away here to blend the flavors. I find that these meals here are so much better the next day. Now it's almost 7 o'clock in the evening, so we're going to eat this tonight, some of it. But usually tomorrow, after those flavors have all blended, oh man, that's when it's ready to go. So I'll bring you back in about 10 minutes when we start to plate it up. 
Come on. Oh, turkey. There. Okay. Time to dish up. It's been... I got a little bit busy, so I've let this sit probably a half an hour, which it certainly didn't need. Oh my lord. Look at that. Here, let me move you over here for a moment. Can you see that? Not really. Just a second. Let's just bring the whole tripod over. Look at that. Oh, you just can't imagine what that smells like. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's let's dish this up. Now. These beans in this bowl are white navy beans and they are just plain white navy beans with absolutely nothing on them, boiled in straight clean water with nothing in it. And uh, so there's, there's nothing extra but the beans. Now since I've dished them up, I put just the tiniest little bit of salt on them. Mm. And they're actually quite, quite edible at this point with nothing more. So if you were out in a kind of a situation where you had limited resources you could certainly get by with just some beans if you had a little salt that would just make it oh look at that make it a little better oh man look at that isn't that amazing oh man that's you just can't imagine what that smells like oh golly that is awesome a little bit more of the meat there well I want to thank you for joining me today it's been a pleasure as always. Been a pleasure as always. And we're going to go and enjoy our supper here. And that will be it for this week. Everybody out there have a safe week. And uh, if you see anything here that you like in any of my videos, look at that. And you know anybody else who might enjoy it, please... Uh, share it with them. Like it yourself if you can. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you all the next time. Take it easy.